and welcome to Gotham Outsiders. Da, 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 Drake Watch. I'm here with my co-host TJ. Hi everyone. I am your Chris proclaimed Batman acolyte, and we're not quite at kissing today, but <laughs> we're better than we were last time we talked to Drake Watch. <laughs> we are skin to skin contact. That's that's a step. Yes. I'm tingly. You're t- <laughs> at the very least. Oh, obviously we're not doing a Drake watch without our very own JLQ, Alex Jaffe and Jazzy Axelrod. Hey. What's up, nerds? I'm <laughs> excited to talk once more about my fourth favorite Robin. I know, Alex Harsh. posted a list on Twitter recently that was like, my favorite Bat family members in order, or like how excited I get when they appear. And Tim was like in the middle yeah. to lower middle. And I was no, like, sir. No respectable. Yeah, I didn't sir, actually have you know heard that. Queer? I and think Alex we didn't like, vet Alex well enough. We didn't know this about him. Look, <laughs> there are no bad Robins. It's just um, uh, I'm more interested in some Robins than others. Well, you're allowed he, to be wrong once in a while. Look, now I want there to be a bad Robin. I Tim, really. It's the one we think everyone agrees is like, oh, that was just the worst Robin. Oh, we can all right. agree. Just that Steve. That, That's just yeah. Steve. Oh my God, like, Steve. Uh, nobody <laughs> likes Steve Green. He was the worst. Green. He was the worst Robin. We all agreed on that. It was I like think, three issues. It was horrible. I think it's Jason Todd that- has his own Robin in uh, White Knight Beyond now. Maybe we can all get behind hating that Robin. Can we hate on that doll-faced Robin he had in the Morrison run? Because oh, Scarlet, oh, oh, that is a bad Robin. Oh yeah, there were a lot of choices Robin. in the Morrison run. Some that was one of great. Yes, so many choices, and not there were others that were. Yeah. I mean, the pendulum swings both ways. Morrison gave us Damien. Morrison yeah. also gave us doll-faced Robin. You know, things happen. Things happen. Well, in the spirit of Pride Month, since we're kicking it off with this, since we've talked last time, we've also had Galaxy of the Prettiest Star came out. I hear. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. My so, book is out. Your book is out. And it, Twitter is going in a flurry. Everybody's I, obsessed with it. I have been amazed at the response. It was not what I expected. I had Very a friend exciting. text me today and said, this lady is going to be at ALA and I think you would love her book. I have a copy for you to give you. And I said, I already have it. I've already read it and I know her. <laughs> but what a flex. I've actually had this book recommended to me too. And I was like, come on. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. You guys so get good. to say you knew me when. I, we did, we Aww. did. <laughs> well, my response was, oh, she's going to blow up in the next year. So... I mean, outside of hopes, right? That would be yeah. that would be amazing. I feel it. We're manifesting it mm-hmm, for you. Mm-hmm. We've lit you. candles. <laughs> Not that you'd need it. You're doing amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. The the book is beautiful, can I say? Yes. Like, you can say holding it in it my is. hand and looking over those amazing just Taylor pages is way different than just seeing them on the computer. Yeah, it's stunning. Ugh, I love it so much. And while this is not a galaxy discussion yet, we are <laughs> here to talk about <laughs> right. uh, Tim Drake and Bernard. We are here to regroup because we've had an update over on Webtoon. Oh, it's getting heavy, y'all. Of all places. <laughs> Did anyone see this coming? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I hoped. I hope. Um, Wayne Family Adventures is the bat comic written for me yes me too like absolutely <laughs> everything in it so far has been like this is what jed zia likes like it's yes. absolutely my batman yes like, me too world's okayest dad that is batman <laughs> mm-hmm. in my opinion to a t thousand percent it's so cute it's so funny and it's so wholesome i love it all the time it's just a constant source of joy in my life mm-hmm. every single week to it see is. like I feel like having a series that grounds these characters and shows you who they are when they're not fighting bad guys does a lot more Mm -hmm. to, in contrast, raise the stakes when drama Mm -hmm. is happening in other times. Like, it it creates this sense of balance we haven't really seen since, like, I don't know, the 90s comics where, like, Nightwing is out being a landlord or something. Or, uh, (laughs) yeah, Uh, Yeah. Tim Drake is having trouble at high school. Uh, it's yeah. not something you see in modern comics anymore. Oh, yeah. And uh, having a space for that on Webtoon really does a lot to build out 
the Batman world. I think it does more for their internal narratives than anything I have read of yeah. Batman. There's so much of just their thoughts and feelings and the writers of this comic get those characters on a level that some of the main writers never have. Like, it's amazing. T- Tim's little internal gay panic freak out this entire episode was one of my favorite things I've ever read. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Chris and I talked to Maria and Susan who work behind the scenes on this mm-hmm. webtoon and we have the receipts of us saying this yeah. is basically what we wanted to see from the webtoon. And you remember I, they said, I think you might get what you want. <laughs> I, I still didn't think we would get what we want though. We like, literally said we were like, we want, we want Batwoman mentoring our little baby gay. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed too good to be true it was like so getting it i was shocked so to give everyone the background we do have a drake watch group chat on twitter yes and late at night alex writes the group and says there's a huge update for drake watch over on <laughs> that food. go check it out um and you made me spend that. a whole dollar alex <laughs> to read these in advance look it's it worth, worth it. it it is absolutely worth it i buy those coins every time i do too i've spent tens of dollars on this at this point. Yeah. so we haven't got our kiss yet i do feel that's like not. that could be coming but that's not, never coming we, right that's yeah, not never the point of this <laughs> i was gonna it. say that is fair because this is that's not the vibe of this to right. be fair and no no one's getting kissed in this it's very sweet right. and like and we have the Tim Drake special coming out this yeah. month. Right. I, I will I will say about Wayne Family Adventures, while there is not a lot of heteros of homosexual sensuality in this, no. despite having uh Tim and um Bernard. Kate as okay. regular characters, um there's also not a lot of heterosexual sensuality. Mm-mm. So yeah. This I is, give it a, I give it all a pass. Yeah, this it's is all the about queerest. relationship dynamics yes. as opposed to like physicality. This is without the kiss, you know, kiss aside. This is the queerest Tim Drake story we've had. This feels queer. Yes. Oh this yeah. Is, yes. This is a queer story. I was just surprised that they were allowed to do this so soon because it just feels like such a new aspect of the Tim character that I thought they would save it for the comics and you know maybe they're saving that kiss moment still. Yeah, which is that's what it feels what I like. Felt. But this feels like. They were almost telling a story in between the lines that yeah. we, you know, sadly weren't getting in the comics, but this mm-hmm. kind of made up for it. So that yeah, when we do like, get the kiss, like, yeah. I like that it's grounding the difficulties mm-hmm. that we've had with previous Tim Drake stories yeah. in character decisions. Yes. It's like, right. this feels in character for Tim to overthink it because that's what he does. Yeah. Yeah, because we've joked about the like panicking to even touch his hand and then to make that canon and him be like, oh my God, oh my God, can I do it? Like we're on a date, but can I touch his hand? Again, one of the gayest things I've ever witnessed. <laughs> like we were saying in the group, I almost read like commentary on the yeah. story that had been being told over the last year yeah. because it was so slow burn. Like mm-hmm. if like, yeah, to me, it felt like a parody of everything Jed Z has been saying in every instance of Drake watch we've had up until yeah. now. Where it's know. that kind of, These writers know. <laughs> I kind of think I want to maybe do this. I don't know. Well, yes. that's why I'm glad Batwoman is in there to be yeah. my voice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my God, yeah. you're already on a date. Just hold his damn hand. <laughs> he is a person. Ask him if he wants yeah. to do this. It was so cute. <laughs> oh my God. Now, do you all think the internal struggle here is just about him and relationships in general? Or like how much of it was the gayness? Because I feel like it wasn't talked about explicitly that much, but it was very obviously a factor here well yeah. let's compare it to his other major that he went to kate yeah as yeah. opposed to dick or yes yes i don't i can't think of actually any other bat person that he would go to imagine for going right. to jason but alfred <laughs> right oh alfred oh god <laughs> well like he had that line at the end of the second part that was like uh, everyone's been really supportive, but I feel like I can talk to you about this. And like, yeah. they don't say, oh, because we're both gay, but we know it's because they're both right. queer. What else could it be? Yeah, I would actually like to see him get dating advice from Harley Quinn. I feel like 
Ooh, if yes. we're going through the queer members of the Batverse that he could like have a sit down with. Yeah, just on, just at, during a fight. She's like, hey, by the way, so I've been watching you with this guy. <laughs> My God. Yes. Like you're hesitant for some reason. <laughs> you can talk to me i'm a therapist <laughs> yeah exactly you... <laughs> oh yes i would kill for that that'd be amazing <laughs> that's who you want to go to for relationship advice harley quinn hey her relationship with poison ivy is healthy and thriving if you say so <laughs> it is i say thriving. so right it's, it's thriving it is healthy as well for any two villains yes <laughs> It's not very healthy if you're the CEO of a pharmaceutical company. Well, you know what? That's be. their problem. Isn't <laughs> Would it? that all of our relationships were unhealthy for the That's CEO true. of a pharmaceutical That's true. company? I That's the queer that. dream, is it not? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just don't be a CEO, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> this is on you. Fine. You chose this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like this is a good start to Pride Month. It seems like we're all very well receiving of this story which makes me very happy me and chris were talking beforehand we're like who's gonna hate it because we don't hate it we both like it so yes. what like do, what do you guys think like do you both you both like it or do you have like criticism i have to ask that do you have a criticism you say first alex and then All I'll, right. I'll bring the room down okay um what i like is that it has a consistent tone with the rest of the series Every single week we get this look into the particular anxieties and foibles and hangups of each member of the Bat family. And when we're, if we're really diving into Tim's issues, uh, this is really at the forefront of what's going on with his character right now. Like, not to offer any spoilers, but right now in the Fast Pass episodes, uh, Jason Todd is going through something that, like, I have been dying to see addressed in any comic in, like, a mature yeah. and reasonable and sympathetic way it's uh, breaking rather, my heart yeah yes. it, it, uh, i was just like hooting and hollering like my favorite football team just yeah. got a touchdown is that yeah. a, that, that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing that's a he, thing good enough that he finally admits that the little white ploof has died yes, yes. <laughs> that's what but it is finally comes clean uh. with that it's like fine yes i bleached the front i bleached the front. <laughs> He's like, my hair has been red. The Morrison was right all along. Right. For a second, there, I thought you were being dead serious. I was in like, my, oh. <laughs> In my personal interpretation of uh, Wayne Family Adventures being kind of the mortar that holds the bricks together, showing us the downtime between these big adventures, uh, it's a perfect Tim and Bernard story. It shouldn't be this landmark story because that's something for the comics to tell but if we're getting more into who tim is and who bernard is uh this is a great place to tell that exact story this is the venue for the hesitant hand holding comic mm -hmm. well i would disagree with you right there alex because i would think that if there is a space to actually go into this relationship it's this series that is clearly out of continuity everyone has different costumes like it's not the main comic storyline in sure. any way shape or form and so i would think that there we we could bend a little bit more and get a little bit more out of it than in the the main storyline but that's not really my issue um because you are right in that this storyline works well within the milieu of wayne family adventures which is every single one of the uh family has a minor nervous breakdown and then they're talked out of it by someone else. <laughs> ah, the old Is hurt it? comfort. Yeah, yes. no, it's just one it's hurt comfort fiction. after another and it's it's a delight. It's a delight. Exquisite. Exquisite. No, I, I like that element about it a lot. It's one of my favorite things. I My problem with it is it's so, I mean, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but this year does start with a two. And like- Starts with a two, it ends with a two. Got a two in the middle. The problem is not so much that this story is bad. It's like, this is the best we've gotten of Tim's mental state or anywhere, a queer superhero's mental state and that anxiety that coming through. Like we, there's not a lot else. And it's like, we're really excited that we have this. And it's like, oh yeah. man. I can't fault the story for that though. That's not, like, no, no. That's the bar is very low fault. is what we're right. saying. I and think. I, yeah. And I feel, I feel bad about that. I feel real bad. Um, and that's a problem with the culture at large 
That is not a problem with Wayne Family Adventures. That's not a problem with the story. That's not even a problem with DC Comics. That's a problem with like everything. Um, and but not with Galaxy me, the Prettiest Star. Well, no. <laughs> so go read that. That's incredibly gay. <laughs> I and, have to say. And every day I'm reminded how gay it is because I read stuff like this, which is very hesitant. And it's like, <laughs> oh, we weren't like that at all. Uh, <laughs> but also there is a place for hesitancy. Like I know there's a lot of readers who are reading this and really identifying with Tim. And I love that. And, I, and again, I love that we're getting into Tim's head with this mm-hmm. and like, or having a character explanation for why the story is such a slow burn. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether that's the intent in the main comics or not, we don't have this yeah. kind of like uh, stressed out internal dialogue concerning his relationship in the main comics. Yeah. Yes. I like, like that they're yeah, making My it problem is you. society, is I guess what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not this book, it's society is to blame. Same. John Zia slowly turning into the Joker. We live in a society. <laughs> Joker Zia. <laughs> Maybe Joker Zia. I'm going to make that meme. Um, but no, I like that I this comic is kind guest. of <laughs> making it textual that, you know, it, like, like John Zia is saying, like, if the comics intentionally or not, we're writing this as Tim having internal dilemmas. Like, I like that this is making that textual and adding to the conversation because... Mm-hmm. Um, also, as she was just saying, like Wayne Family Adventures kind of feels very separate uh, in terms of continuity. So the fact that they were getting to comment on this thing that's so relevant right now and it's being affected by an ongoing plot line, like to me, that was just really cool. So like, yeah, it is I'm really so cool. Glad we're talking about it. <laughs> you know what else is cool? Kate's gay haircut. Yes. Really cool. Yes. <laughs> she had on like black lipstick at one point in the oh, outfit. She looks so oh. good. So um, good. I want to talk a little bit about the canonical relationship between Wayne Family Adventures and the main comics that we touched on a little bit before. Sure, mm-hmm. um, go for I'm it. Reminded of something that uh, Mark Wade said about the Elseworlds line when he was launching that as an editor at DC. Uh, that uh, we see all these different per- that the goal is to display all these different permutations of stories we could tell with these characters, where the events would be very different. But at their core, they would be the same person. We would see how Batman would react if he was in a cowboy world or in a vampire world. But he would still be Bruce Wayne in that situation. So even though the Wayne Family Adventures comics aren't literally happening in the DC universe, I think they kind of fill that spirit of showing us who these people are, uh, despite the fact that they're not actually having video game tournaments to see who has to wear Nightwing's disco suit. You can't prove that they aren't. <laughs> exactly. You <laughs> also right. can't prove they aren't. <laughs> I maintain Wayne Family Adventures is canon and everything it's else sem- is an Elseworld. It's, it's semi <laughs> See, that's, that's a nice... I like that, Chris. Right, uh, right? <laughs> the only canon that matters. <laughs> you choose the earth you live on. Yes! <laughs> well, I'm. I think Chris and I both are just always happy to have an excuse to talk about Wayne Family Adventures. Yeah, that's true. Any day. And, yeah, hopefully again soon. But uh, until then, we have the Tim Drake special coming out later oh, yeah, this we month. Oh, yeah, we got to be for that. Well, yeah, but just leading into that, like, what do we What do we want? What do we think we're going to get and what do we want? And then Open I need mouth, to meet up later. tongue down the throat kiss. <laughs> that's what we want. Do we think no, we're going to get it? <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I mean, I want the same thing I want with every queer story, which is I want either someone to state that they're queer or make out with someone in a queer way. That's yes. That's what I want. Both. Just I'm bisexual and then kiss him. Undeniable. Like, yeah, (laughs) both is great, but I just need one. I'm I'm setting the bar so low here. (laughs) I don't need a sexuality label at this point, because like if he just wants to roll and vibe, I'm cool with that. But I would like to get a official like we are boyfriends would you like to be my boyfriend (laughs) and then kiss and then to me I would be happy if he just is rolling and vibing then I want him to claim that he's rolling and vibing yes okay like yeah yeah, that's fair you need to say it's like I don't know what this means but I do know that this means this 
We right. need a heart stopper. We need a right. scene where he is on his computer, on the back computer, Googling, am I bisexual? <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think we've had people commenting behind the scenes about that vibing, but we haven't actually heard about the vibing on the page. Yeah. <laughs> so like, well, here, here's the character who is like, I don't do labels. Yeah. I, yeah. Gender and sexuality is an endless feast that I mm-hmm. dive into face first or whatever. That does or, not seem like Tim though. No. No, In no way. Tim would want a label. He he would. He would That's write him. his own. Yeah. Here's the scene. The scene is Tim Drake is Googling, am I bisexual on the back computer? But yes. it auto-completes because every other member of the family has already searched that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be the Tim Drake story in the Pride special. Yeah, <laughs> where they all come out. We're all, we're all. Gay. Well, we're as all as you all know, out. I am I am in the Pride special. You are. Yes. So yes, I got advanced copies. I've read the Tim Drake story. Mm-hmm. It does oh, not involve shoot. the bad computer. Oh uh, well. <laughs> Next next year. That's next all year. I'm going to say. All right. Does not we involve the bad computer. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you both so much for joining us again. Yes. Uh, any uh, One more thing I want to say uh, while we're on the subject of Webtoon, a great new Webtoon just launched. Yes. Vixen NYC. Yes. It's so while good. While checking that app out, Ooh. absolutely see this. It's a brand new Vixen comic about her moving to the city and being mm. uh, and making it on her own and mm-hmm. hanging out with Beast Boy and Bumblebee. And, and Batman. Bruce- and Batman, when Bruce Wayne shows up to host Friday Night Live. I love uh, that. I was great. dying. They were like, How have you not told me about this? <laughs> I just read it today. <laughs> okay. Well, so, I yeah, read it too. Driving well, right now. Yeah. While you're <laughs> while you're hanging out on Webtoon, uh, checking out DC stuff, that's their latest. Yes, it's really good. It just started, TJ. That's mm-hmm. the only reason you haven't heard about it. I promise. Okay. Fair. <laughs> All right. Well, until. Next time, which should be very soon. Thank you both for coming on again. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Gotham Outsiders. You can find me, Chris, on Twitter at The Myth of Psyche, where I talk feminism, queerness, psychology, books, and oftentimes Batman. You can also now find me at talkingcomics.com, where I write reviews and a column and sometimes the news about comics. You'd also find my co host, TJ. At TroyFin2 on Twitter, where I talk about all things book related and you know, Batman more often than I used to. And you can find us both on Twitter at Gotham Outsiders, where we talk about Batman all the time. Join us next time. Same bat time, same bat place.